Yes, okay. absolutely. Are you aware that for a senior citizen, a homeowner, to qualify for these programs, the maximum income is $38,000 per year, and also the assessment value or the market value of the property cannot be more than $750,000? Mm -hmm. Are you aware about that? I, 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 you know what, I, I hear what you're saying. I don't know the ins and the outs of the, the laws and the programs. All I'm asking you is to ask staff to take a look at what other jurisdictions and other cities are doing with respect to access to low-income housing and finding creative solutions for people Okay, to remain in their homes, to stay in their homes, to sell their homes, have places to go. Uh, I, I, sir, I'm, I'm, I'm 66 years old, so I'm not 88 or 90. My friends who have homes and whose children are out of the house right now are taking in foreign language students um, to fill the three or four bedrooms because they they too need money but that requires a managerial ability to start a small business that kind of thing is happening now when you're older it could be a number of people uh, living together sharing common space having a social worker uh, and meals brought in to help you. These are some of the I get, I do get it, uh, thank you. Okay. But are you also aware that the majority of seniors that we have out there mm -hmm. are struggling to survive with meager pensions that they have? Yes. And to add additional financial pressures in terms of additional property tax increases, that would be forcing them to, to be on is at, uh, Food banks, literally speaking. No, not if they have options. Our problem is you have people in untenable situations sitting in their homes because there's no options and no places for them to go. For instance, I sell my home, I have to go live somewhere. Where am I going to live? A, a condo, uh, a, 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 we don't have the options and we don't have the alternatives right now because we haven't done the research. We haven't done the work, we haven't looked around and we don't have the options and the alternatives to give people so that they can liquidate, they can sell or they can stay, they can find different living arrangements to bring some money in and to reduce their uh, reliance to have a little more spendable income. That's all I'm saying. A lot of people are being held captive now. It's true. We know it. I hear it all the time. But people are going, Dina, what's my option? What are the options? What are the alternatives? And what I would ask you guys to do is look at some of the alternatives. Great alternatives, great pilot projects happening all across North America. Look at them. The home share, I just got one that came across my desk the other day from Brampton, the Brampton Home Share uh, Program and Agreement, and they've been uh, taking them from three other places in Canada, but not Toronto. We're not doing the research. We're not on the leading you, edge. My last question, are you aware that Ciro Toronto is the leading city in terms of of having all these programs to assist the seniors so they'll be able to stay home and to survive, especially given the meager mm -hmm. incomes that they have, and uh, to add more financial pressure to them, it would be a suicidal move. That I don't think that there's much appetite in City Council. Mm -hmm. do we that. don't want to add financial pressure okay. for them. We want them to have a, a good quality of life. We want to take the financial pressure off. And maintaining in your 80s or 90s a huge five bedroom house is a financial pressure that no senior citizen really needs unless they choose to Thank do you. it. Okay, thank you, Councillor Palazzo. Councillor Thompson. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Through you, um, Ms. Lebo, uh, sales tax, are you supportive of that? Progressive, there are progressive. That one for the city specifically. Uh, the sales tax specifically for the city. 
Well, yeah, other cities are using the, uh, it's up to, look, we need the money. We just right, heard sir, from the city ma manager ma ma sorry, ma using ma the Ma'am, I'm asking you whether or not you support that. I understand about the reports, I understand the information from the city manager and so on, but I just want to I'm not familiar your... about the sales tax in front of the okay. city. What I do know is other cities have implemented sales taxes. Uh, if they're progressive sales taxes that don't hurt the most vulnerable, uh, then the cities have gone forth. Again, city staff has oh. to do the research. Hotel tax? Uh, these are taxes other cities have put into place for tourists coming into the city. Uh, and they have put money in the coffers for roads and transportation. Well, I'm trying to understand, but has your association actually spoken about any of these types of uh, revenue tools specifically? Uh, not specifically. Okay, we know enough. we we are looking at the revenue tools, and we are looking at revenue tools. Okay, as an option, right. you can only cut so much. And in the last six years, we've gone down per capita at a time when we should be getting ready, okay, for another large population. So when I mean, you when you responded with respect to the question to the deputy mayor uh, as it related to, I think the point you were making was that seniors should be able to supplement their income. Is that what you talked about in terms of being able to rent out rooms and so on? Was that what you were trying to intimate? No, what we were talking about is many seniors live on fixed incomes. Uh, and with inflation going up, uh, they feel financially squeezed. Right. Uh, and they are put in positions where they either eat or go to the doctor. The TTC is a very high price ticket. Some people don't fill their prescriptions. This is not the quality of life that we want in this city where people say, I can't take my medicine, can't go to the doctor because it's a question of using the TTC so what I was trying or to going to the doctor. What I was trying to understand from you, ma'am, is that when you made reference to the rooms, uh, it seemed to me you were suggesting that there's an opportunity for seniors to be able to generate revenues through rental of rooms in their homes. Is that what you were saying? There are all kinds of opportunities. That's one of them. There are experiments in housing going on. All I'm asking is that Toronto City Council and staff look at some of these experiments. Right, right. It could be eye-opening and so, it could alleviate. So are you suggesting then that we would direct residents to then obviously as a course of business be able to rent out rooms in order to generate revenue? There are housing. Sorry, may I just finish my yeah, line of sure. question? So sure. to rent out rooms? And, and then be able to pay taxes. I, I, it's not clear to me what you're saying. There are housing registries that have been created uh, focusing on a senior population, um, if finding roommates or housemates. Social isolation is, is um, a health deterrent in seniors. Uh, keeping people engaged, keeping people healthy is very necessary as we age. And being alone and isolated in a home under severe financial pressure is not the way to go. So, so absolutely, housing alternatives of all kinds will bring relief mm. to people. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. Thanks, Councillor Thompson. Uh, any other questions? All right, well, well then, thank you very much uh, for your representations and uh, appreciate that. We'll go back to Sean Mahar because I think he was just stepped out for a minute uh, when his turn came up.